why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, I know people will be trickling in. Um, but in, in the recognition of time, we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everybody to the next Spatial Solutions webinar. Um, so I'm Chris Aiken, president of Paradigm Solutions, um, focused on GIS solutions, working with a lot of campuses, municipalities, utility districts, whatnot, um, to get their GIS programs going, working on facility mapping, uh, a lot of campuses, municipal work. Um, and so we've created this webinar series to talk about how GIS and these spatial products are supporting different institutions. And so today we have Deborah Massaro from Austin Community College to talk about uh, their program that they've got going. Um, Deborah's done a great job, uh, what I say, uh, doing a lot with a little, um, getting a, a good program off the ground, um, getting their, their campus mapped um, using GIS. Um, not necessarily the, the biggest staff, not necessarily the biggest budget, budget but uh, has done some really cool stuff. Um, and so today she's gonna be presenting on different technologies that they've been exploring. Um, and off of that, that's her. So with that, <laughs> I will pass it to Deborah, and uh, we'll get you started. You want to share your screen? Yes, thanks, Chris. All right. All right. Uh, everyone, can you hear me okay? Speak up a little louder if you can. So um, thank you for joining us today. I'm Deborah Massaro, the GIS and Digital Information Manager for the Facilities and Construction Department at ACC. Um, we have Holly Weiss, our GIS Coordinator, and Beth Richter, our GIS Application Coordinator, who are here in this room with me today. Um, and they're ready to help you all answer questions. So a little bit about us. I graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Architecture at Wentworth Institute of Technology in 2014. I started my career in the facilities world in 2015 at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and has since moved to, on to Austin as I continue to expand my knowledge of all things space, GIS, archiving, and more. Holly and Beth both changed their careers, Holly from real estate marketing and search engine optimization, and Beth from engineering. They came back to ACC to study GIS. They completed their certificates, interned in different departments at ACC, and then joined our FIS team. We have a lot to share with you today, but there will be plenty of time for questions at the end, and we'll also be sharing a QR code of this story map, so don't worry about reading all of the slides. So a little bit about ACC. We have 11 active campuses and two land banks that are going to be under construction soon. We're one of the largest community college districts in the nation. We have 70,000 students of all different statuses. And as we like to say, ACC is for everyone. ACC is all about opportunity. And with that in mind, we started our internship program in the facilities and construction department with the thought that we could do our part for the students by giving them this great work experience to put on their resume. We started our GIS initiative almost two years ago with the hope that we could map out different things at all 13 campuses that would benefit not only our department, but one day, every department and community member at ACC. We worked first with the GIS department to hire four GIS interns and later brought on two CAD interns. We now have two full-time GIS coordinators, a BIM coordinator, facilities archivist, and six interns. The benefit to having interns is a lower cost for ACC and experience for the students. The con is that they leave us because they are only interns. Our programs here are not your typical community college programs. We have phenomenal classes and professors that are introducing the students to all new technologies. So of course, being still in the beginning phase of our GIS implementation and being primarily made up of these students, they're constantly trying out new programs and thinking of new ways to do things. This is another pro of having interns because you have the luxury of experimenting at intern rates instead of consultant rates. So for some context, 
We started this program as a pilot two years ago with one campus, and over the last year, we've been collecting and building out the data for all campuses based on what we learned from the pilot and feedback from the higher ups. We've been experimenting with new technologies, and as we're exploring these different ideas, we don't always have an immediate use for them or even know what the future use will be, but that's okay. We wanted to show you some of these ideas today and where we are with using them and where we want to go. That brings us to cats versus dogs and sometimes birds. This presentation is all about the pros and cons of one method or another. And we're not necessarily saying that one is always better than another. Um, so at the show of hands, who is using 360 photos or ortho imagery in some form? And <laughs> um, who has floor wear floor plans in GIS? So hopefully for some of you that are already using or doing some of these methods, maybe at the end you can share with us your uses. And for those that aren't, maybe you'll have something that maybe we'll have something that interests you to start using. So our first comparison here is 360 imaging versus drone imaging. We did a pilot last year of some 360 photos that our administration loved. And so since then, we've been gathering the photos all over the district. But then what do we do with them? Our first use of these photos are walkthrough tours made in Kula. We found a large variety of ways that a walkthrough walk tour could be useful. A cool space like our new Make It Center here, this space engages students and community members to discover a variety of meaningful career pathways that lead to well-paying jobs in Texas. The displays here rotate out to highlight different areas of study that we offer here at ACC. Our chancellor loves to show off the space in person, but now he has a way to do it virtually as well. Next, we are the construction team as well. And so we put together some of these walkthrough tours here. This is helpful for the project managers to have photos on hand to easily virtually walk a space and make notes on a project. The con is that, of course, progress changes every day. So we're looking into seeing what it would take and how cost saving it would be to do in-house walkthroughs using interns to gather the photos and make the tours versus the outside companies who currently come in and take still photos. The only pro of a still photo is that they're usually straight on and some of the project managers will measure off of these. Another use we have here are for vacant spaces. So I've done a few of these tours for, um, for different shell spaces that we have. And we'll send these to the design teams to help them visualize, create an estimate, and really just save them time from having to come back out here and gather more info than they need. Last, I created these department tours. So these are for like space accounting purposes, to help the space committee meetings virtually see the spaces that they might be fighting over. Or now you can take a look and see like what equipment is in here. Like this is one of our health science spaces. So you see all of our dummies in here. They look pretty realistic. So now you get a sense of what the space looks like without even having to go there. So next, our second comparison of photos are putting the 360 photos into GIS. Holly made us this app using the ArcGIS indoors data model where you can filter to the campus, building, or floor to see what you wanna see. So first we're gonna stay um, up here, we have two options, photos by building or photos by campus. So we're gonna stay on photos by building and we're going to filter here to our San Gabriel campus. So the app brings us there. And now we can see all the photos taken at our San Gabriel building 1000. We're going to zoom in here and we're going to click on this photo. And as it loads here. So, so now you can see where you are on the floor plan while also seeing the photo in the same view. 
And in these photos, you can even attach manuals for, like in this instance, it's a water heater, but any other mechanical equipment, things like that. So now we're going to show you the difference between these views. So we're going to head over to our Highland campus. Mm -hmm. Load and get us there. So now you can see how you have all the photos for our Highland campus, what building 1000 here, but you're not seeing the rest. So for buildings like these where they're connected, you can choose our photos by campus view where you can, we're gonna go back to our Highland campus. And now we can see the photos for the entire campus on the second level. So you can see there's a lot of photos here. It's a really large campus for us. Um, you can see all those photo points and you can also click and see them on the side here. So this photo viewer is still a similar idea as our walkthrough tours, but it's a different visualization. You could easily debate that some of the ways that we're using our walkthrough tours would be better shown with this method instead. I would say one reason that we currently choose the walkthrough tours is because it's more ready to share at this time. We're still working on getting all of our photo points into GIS, and then we need to assign access levels. The Kula Tours, I can put together a building walkthrough in just a few hours, and it seems to show the users what they need at this time. So we have a few examples of how we're using the photo viewer method so far. Holly created this parent resource map that locates childcare, changing tables, nursing rooms, and more. So for example, we'll go back to our San Gabriel campus here. Just take a minute to load. So you can see our different icons over here to the side. Taking a minute to catch up with me. <laughs> yeah, so you see our building here and the icons. And um, then you can see, so we have the nursing area highlighted here. So you can see the room on the side, and now you can get an idea of what this space looks like and like what it has, what it doesn't have, what you might need, all before you get here. So it can help you better prepare to make the best use of this space. We also have here, um, we have this example of our shutoff and meter location map for maintenance. So Holly created this app with using Orpho imagery, and this was before we started our 360 photo initiative. So she taught the maintenance team how to use this app and to locate the different meters that they have, and then they'll add a point, attach whatever info they need to it, and they can even take photos of it. So right now, these are still photos and they open up in a different window, but we foresee creating something like this, um, something similar to our parent resource map where you can have the 360 photo if needed and have the photo um, appear down here while you still are seeing the map. So next, we move on to drone imagery. We haven't done too much with this right now, but we've tested out a few examples. So we did a flight over our Elgin campus, which is our farm campus. We wanted this imagery for our base map, but also the agricultural department wanted imagery of their crops. We processed a red edge ortho photo of the area around our farming building. The healthier plants can be seen with the red here because more chlorophyll was picked up with the red edge lens. Studies like this are not only just useful for the agricultural department, but we could also use this for our landscapers to let them know what trees need more attention before the plant dies. So we also decided to get some drone images at our Eastview playground. This is a state-of-the-art outdoor learning environment that is just beautiful. Our project managers thought that some drone images would capture it nicely. 
when we got there though we realized that there's a bunch of trees in the way so it's kind of hard to see what's going on so we were able to get some nice perspectives that really do capture it nicely while we were there though we decided let's grab some 360s as well so these are cool but you're not getting the overall effect that some of the drone perspective shots captured. So the question is, what are you getting from each method? Are they all useful in some form? They're both cool in different ways, but what is the end goal besides just adding this to the PM project portfolio? So here is a recap of the photo methods and uses that we've gone over. One way is not going to be the best for everything, and sometimes there's a few ways to essentially show the same thing. So we're still figuring that out to decide what's best for what. So now we move on to 3D modeling. There's many methods of viewing 3D models in GIS. We've been experimenting with a few to see what benefits we can get from each method. In our first method here, Beth was playing with simple geo modeling in GIS to show existing masses with proposed building locations. She started here with these very basic extractions, and then we were asked to make them more realistic. So I really love how this came out. It's so fun. It really gives a good idea of what the proposed buildings could look like on this site. Beth has done this for a few campuses for administration so that they could visualize what, in this instance, portables would look like on an existing campus. The end users have found this method really useful. Our second method here uses aerial imagery that was collected with a DJI Phantom 4 drone at our Elgin campus the same day that we went out for the ortho imagery. To make this model, we had to capture imagery at various heights. First, we got flat imagery at 200 feet. Then we got oblique imagery at various elevations. With this data, we use Drone Deploy to create a 3D model of our building. We can then bring the Drone Deploy model into ArcGIS Pro and view it as a scene. This was a really, really cool process. But the question again, what do we use it for? We have the idea that maybe we will capture this type of data for existing buildings and then integrate it with the geo models for proposed buildings. That way, we can get a full area 3D model to really see what the proposed building would look like with its surroundings. So now we move on to our Revit models. We have two CAD interns that are creating these models from scratch for all of our older buildings. The interns create the models and then work with Beth or another GIS intern to create the models to get the models into ArcGIS. To do this, you first create a local scene in GIS by setting the scene to the Texas State Plane with feet as the display unit. Then you define the projection of the Revit model, which creates a projection file that is associated with the Revit model and read in the background. Next, you'll add the Revit model to the scene. At this point, you'll want to verify that, that the display units match the model units. You'll then position the Revit model manually. And if all steps are followed, you should be able to add the entire BIM workspace into Pro, which will then allow you to turn layers on and off in the model. So you can see our model here, and now we can start to visualize what the building looks like with its surroundings. Beth created us this fly through here. And of our Cypress 2000 model. So the negative to this method is that the rest of the surrounding area is still flat, so you don't get the real visualization. We could combine all of our 3D, all three of our modeling methods here, have the Revit models for our buildings, drone deploy models for our surrounding area buildings, and geo models for our proposed buildings. We haven't attempted this yet, but that's our thought for the future, so that we can really get a good look at the full site in 3D. We have another example here, which I preloaded for us. This is our Northridge campus. This campus, we have a few models complete right now. So you can move around and get a good idea of 
what the campus looks like here. So you can also use, go here and we can turn things on and off or go to different floors. So say we just want to see the second floor, then we can turn everything else off. And then here, if we don't want to see the structure, and then maybe we just want to see certain things for the architectural layers, so we can turn everything else off. So now you have just the room masses here. We think this could be really helpful for our space planning committee to have a 3D representation of what these rooms look like. And then you could even color code these blocks so you can distinguish the different departments. So as you can see, we've really been trying a lot of different methods to see how they work and then see what we could use them for. The answer isn't always clear to us right away, but sometimes others might find a use that we didn't think of. So it's still worth it to see where it goes. So now we move on to floor plans in GIS. I would say that this is one of our biggest focuses right now. We want to get our plans in and make them floor aware so that we could accurately map out assets on different levels. When we started this process, we reached out to Esri for their input. Although they had a ready to go workflow that could make the process easier, we didn't quite have what we would need to conform to their method. For instance, our CAD layers would have to be named in a certain way to speak to ArcGIS correctly. We were also encouraged that to do this faster, we could hire consultants. If you remember, we are mostly intern run to not only get our students real life work experience, but also to save the college money. So since we wanted to keep this in-house and we didn't want to change our CAD layers, we decided to go with creating our own method from scratch. Our first attempt at this was a process written by our intern, Andrew. The CAD would be imported and then located, rotated, and scaled by I. We'll open up our first dashboard here. So you can see how you can go into the plan and see all the rooms and click on the different spaces here. And room info will pop up for you. Um, you can add whatever info you want. So you can do what you need it to do, but if you know how they got in here, then you know that they weren't accurately located or scaled. So it's not a good version of the truth. Um, so if you go back here, you can see how in this example, because we're scaling things differently and placing buildings on our own, these separate but connected buildings don't line up. We can still ask the track on these maps, but we realized that there had to be a way to make them more accurate. Our CAD intern, Renee, started to play with this idea of how to get things into GIS easier and more accurate. A lot of good ideas, but we couldn't quite get there. Then, a few months ago, we were given a site survey CAD plan, which we placed into GIS, and it snapped right where it needed to go. This was exciting. Beth worked with the surveying company to learn the CAD properties needed to come up with the workflow for the integration process. Now, Renee is going into all of our CAD floor plans and changing the units, adding in a coordinate point, and assigning the correct coordinate system. And how do we get these coordinate points? First, Beth on the GIS side will go into GIS and from the aerial determine control points on the site, somewhere where we know that our CAD site plan lines up well with the aerial imagery. So then Renee will change the units, scale, and coordinate system of the site plan and move the plan to the control points. She will then do the same for the CAD floor plans using the coordinates from the updated site plan, but she will only assign one coordinate so that our CAD files stay at a normal rotation. Next, the plan is geo-referenced into GIS and rotated to match the site plan. This chart here shows us the square footage calculated in CAD and then the square footage calculated in GIS, which pretty much matches each other, which proves that our plans came into scale. 
This new process, of course, is great, but it does take more collaboration, as both someone from the CAD and GIS side have to do their part in order to make it work. Our next process will be our most accurate in-house process yet. Using method two that we just talked about, we're going to also start getting and using known points to get these coordinates. We've tested this with a few surveys that we've already had, and they're working great. The process now is to get updated surveys for our 13 campuses. We're working on setting up a program with our surveying department to use students to create these surveys and establish a system of survey monuments to, again, keep this as in-house and student-friendly as possible. These survey monuments will also assist surveyors in the future that come to be worked in their campuses. All of these methods yield similar outcomes, and you really could use any of, of them and have pretty accurate data. We've kind of taken the long route to get things the most accurate, so we do have ways to go. Esri's route most definitely would have been faster to produce, but trying to get funding approved probably would have taken us longer. So now we move on to archiving, specifically our real estate. The old method that we're all running away from is of course paper files thrown everywhere, essentially useless. The only benefit to paper drawings is for the historical factor, our blue blueprints. We have a building that was built in 1915 and we have these original drawings. These are the only drawings that I refuse to throw away as I know that they could be a cool display one day. So for everything else, what to do? The first thought is to scan and get onto your server so everyone can view them there. And this isn't a bad idea. The downside is that you need to know property addresses in order to find the file that you're looking for, since there's no graphics in the file server name. This was a project for us. This was a problem for us. Our real estate is constantly referred to but it takes longer than necessary to find the documents that you're looking for. So that's what's the lead of getting all of our real estate into GIS. She mapped out every single parcel and easement in the district, and then she attached info to each piece. So we're gonna zoom in to our Highland campus here. So we can click on a parcel here, and now we see the basic info. We see notes about it, and then she's even attached all of the do um, important documents to the parcel. So you can open it up, and now you see the official document that you might be looking for. This app is used by our executive vice chancellor daily, and he loves it so much. It makes everything so much quicker. And this isn't even the best part yet. That's also made us this editor app. So now, instead of sending a bunch of emails trying to describe a location or printing out paper, users can go in here, select the editing, editing tool, and then they can circle something out here. They can fill in the fields over here, and they can even attach documents that they might have. Then they'll submit this, and then Beth will get a notification. She'll go in and review it and make the updates as needed. This is tremendous, having a visual to all of our real estate and to understand the parcels that you're talking about to accurately make updates. We also have the idea that we can attach building closeout docs to the buildings in GIS, and then we can solve our metal sorting problem for them as well by containing all the important info to the actual building in the map. So I think for this category, we can easily say that one method is actually better than the others. So with all that we've gone over today, we as a department have a lot of work to do to implement these processes, decide what's best for what, and where to use it. We've had a lot of internal use of our, in our department, but now we're going to start focusing on developing applications that will work for other departments and the public. We hope we've got you thinking as well with either thoughts for us or ideas on how you want to use some of these methods. And if you want to take another look at our presentation, go ahead and scan this QR code. And now if you have any questions, we'd love to answer them.
Thank you, Deborah, for, for that. Um, yeah, if you got questions, feel free to post it in the chat. Uh, I think I've enabled it that everyone can chat or post it to the to the hosts. Um, first off, give you big credit for this. Um, you know, the way you guys have grown has been pretty impressive over the last couple of years, um, and and you're doing a lot and utilizing your interns has been spectacular. Um, there's you know, I say with a lot of universities and a lot of campuses, that's a that's an untapped resource is those interns. Uh, but the key is having somebody that can drive that, uh, that kind of what I call the GIS coordinator who can kind of lead that charge. Um, so it sounds like you've done a great job with that. Um, and and it sounds like you're getting some good buy in. What was that? And a team effort for sure. So <laughs> good people here on our team and our professors that have really made this happen. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, I, I know you guys got a great GIS program uh, on the education side there. Um, the, you know, it sounds like also you're getting some great buy-in. Uh, you talk about, the, you, you mentioned several times about the chancellors um, that, that are sharing that. Um, I'm going to actually share my screen over here so we can get some emails and all. Can you all, can you see that? Okay. Um so it sounds like you've got some great buy-in with the chancellors. Um, talk about the, the the digital plan room is what I call it. What you're scan with the scanning of the documents. I think that's invaluable in getting rid of those. Um, but then also the the virtual walkthroughs. <laughs> sounds like uh, chancellors really lit up on on being able to walk through and, and showcase the campus. Oh, is yeah. that being used a lot? Yeah, um, mostly internally right now, but it's still really helpful for our department, and we bring that to meetings and share it with the rest of. Um, the higher ups and they love it. It's been so much, it's so helpful for them to not have to go to these campuses now just to see what they're talking about here. Yeah, there was one question kind of dovetailing to that about the, the, the construction monitoring. How often are you going out to those construction sites where you're either building the new buildings or, um, you know, renovating one to do these updates? Yeah, so we, um, we've done just like, little demo projects of what we could do with these. We haven't officially started with any new projects, um, but if you're aware, we recently um, received like $700 million for our new bonds. So um, we haven't started those projects, but we're trying, we're in discussions of how we could implement some of these processes before those projects get started. So our, um, our little demos that we showed you here are what we're using to see if it's feasible or not for us to do it. Yeah, and I think that's that's the right way to do it. Um, talk to a lot of folks of, of talking about pilot projects and little, you know, the quick wins and show the proof of concepts uh, rather than going too far too fast on some of these. You know, let's demo with one building or one site or, you know, one, one data set and let those light, light bulb moments go off. So yeah. It sounds like you've done quite a lot of those proof of concepts. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> <laughs> It's good though. I mean, anytime our um, our boss like asks for examples of what we could do, or like he might not even know that we've done something, so we can be like, oh, like take a look at this. Is this what will be helpful? So it's great to have them all like ready to go to show off. Yeah, I, I say a lot of GIS is the advocacy side of it. Um, so we got a couple questions that have popped in. Um, Tom Shewin, uh, do you share your base map with Hayes, Travis, or Williamson counties? Do we share it? Is that yeah, do you share like your 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 base map as far as and I guess that could be either the, the whole campus updated base map or also the 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 floor plans. Do you share your floor plans with anybody? So we um right now we are just sharing our district map. So if you go to ACC's website or um our construction website, you can get a link to see it there. Um, and that is just our basic info. So just like where the campuses are, the basic info for that, our taxing districts. Um, we are in talks with our security team here to try to figure out how much information we can share with even just ACC people and then the general public. So it's um, because of everything that's going on in the world, we're just trying to not put more out there than we need to. Um, but that's why a lot of what we're doing um, is mostly internal at the moment with our maintenance team, but it's still getting a lot of use. It's not fully out there yet. 
Yeah, there's a lot of conversations about that these days. Mm -hmm. um, I know if you go to Google Maps, it's amazing. Floor plans always tend to pop up. People keep adding those. Yeah, which is scary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jason, uh, you put a question on here too about have you worked on uh, mapping and modeling subsurface utilities or building mechanical systems? I guess off of that, a lot of what you've shown is above ground infrastructure, the stuff you can easily see. I know I do a lot of work with the utilities, uh, the stuff that gets buried and forgotten about. Have you guys done anything with mapping the utilities and, and getting more accuracy out of that? Yeah, so we haven't yet, but um, with our new campuses being built, we are definitely going to be gathering that info. The question now is just, are we gonna go out there with like our drone and fly it? Um, or are we going to need to hire someone to do it? So that is the question, but we for sure wanna gather that information. Um, we also wanna get like our existing utilities mapped out so that we can connect them all to the new stuff that we gather. But um, but yeah, we haven't started that yet, but intentionally. Yeah. I often refer to, especially on the utilities, getting that what I call the initial spaghetti network built. Mm -hmm. you know, or otherwise, it's a, a, at least it's an infrastructure that you can start to see. Um, somebody actually just asked if we can get a link to the story map in the chat. This also, uh, this this video or this recording, this webinar is being recorded and we'll post on YouTube as well. Uh, so you can also get to it through that Um so I'll share that afterwards. Um, but Deborah, I don't know if you have a link that you want to share now um, or we can get it out later. I can figure out how to. <laughs> if not, we get it out afterwards. Um, yes, I think I can just paste it. That's all right. We'll, we'll get we'll get to it. Uh, there was another question popped up here about, are you, you know, the, uh, you guys showed some BIM data. Are you using BIM? in your day-to-day -day operations for facilities? Um, yeah, so we are working on that. We have 74 buildings and we only have about 10 modeled in um, Revit so far. So with those models, they're also just architectural. So we don't have any systems in there. So our goal is that we're going to get all 74 buildings um, models in BIM, and then from there, we can start just solely relying on the BIM models for um, like space accounting and things like that. We're requiring BIM models for all of our new buildings, any renovations, so we can hopefully start building up that library and focus more on them. Um, we've noticed, though, that our uh, Revit models work a lot better with like some of the um, ArcGIS indoors apps that we're trying to build. So it's definitely a push to get them made so that we can um, use them there. Okay, nice. Um, and you've obviously talked a lot about interns. Um, I, I know I said, you know, it's great, um, but it sounds like you've really spearheaded that, you know, and, and then using the interns, what's, <laughs> what are some of the biggest uh, drawbacks you've seen on that? You talk about, you know, <laughs> training them and move on. Uh, have you seen a lot of turnover on that on your side? Um, it depends. I feel like we do go through phases where we'll have like a bunch that stay for like a year and it's great. And then they might like all leave at once. And then we are like have to scatter and find some more, which there's plenty here. I, um, our GIS department's awesome. So uh, we definitely have a good pick of them. Um, but yeah, we go through phases like that. I, there's only been a few that have left over after only like one semester. But yeah, the training of it is hard when they leave. We gotta retrain them, and I think sometimes we forget, you know, explain like what we're doing here. Um, yeah, so excited about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. it yeah, I would say the biggest drawback is that they do leave, and we can't just keep them forever. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right, I got another one here uh, for the ACC room and feature finder. Finder is this done in RGS online environment or RGS enterprise? Sorry if you mentioned it and she missed it. No, um, so we do not have enterprise yet. So I believe our finder app was made online. Yes. Yes, online with, uh, with experience yes the experience builder, RTS online. And, and that's a great question, um, Alice, that a lot of campuses, universities, um, I personally say don't need to jump into enterprise right out of the gate. Uh, I mean, you look at everything Deborah's done so far, it's in the ArcGIS Online environment. 
There's a lot of power you can do with the story maps, with dashboards, with the data collection, with editing capabilities. I mean, she showed a bunch of stuff and that's all done in ArcGIS Online. Um, I think a lot of times people think uh, or they get kind of sold that they need to get into that enterprise and it's almost moving too far too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for me, that demarcation and, and Deborah, I'm curious on your take on it is is when you start thinking about integrating with other systems or there's certain things like if you want to go indoors, but when you start talking about that bigger, real campus-wide systems integration, for me, that's that demarcation of, of the enterprise. And before that, you can do a lot of it, almost all of it in online. Yeah, we um, we definitely had a moment where we thought we like needed to get to enterprise right away. And we were trying to figure out like how to do that. Can we do that in-house? What can we do? Um, but we stepped back and we realized that maybe we don't need to. And so we've just continued with where we're going. Um, we're able to do a lot with indoors without enterprise. Like we we can do a lot with it. So um, at this point, I don't really think we have a timeline of when we're going to start using enterprise because we haven't found a lot of drawbacks yet from not. So. Right. Uh, going back to the scaling issue question or on uh, about your buildings on the building scaling issue that we touched on was it an issue with the base map data not coordinating a grid surface coordinate system or just a differentiation between design plans and as builds so was it kind of more technical was it a uh, from the engineering the design plans yeah. so um so all of our CAD plans are to scale in um in AutoCAD but our in our first floor plan iteration, the issue is just that we didn't have the workflow of how they would just go in there and we wouldn't have to scale it. Um, so we've since figured out how to just keep them where you place it and there's no, um, it just goes there. Like you don't have to scale at all. Um, and yes, with the, so with then getting it to do that, we found out our existing floor plans, we had to, uh, change to the decimal, decimal feet. Yeah, the decimal feet instead of architectural. So it's really like 12, um, like one twelfth of the size that they used to be, but they're still like to scale. Does that make yeah. sense? So now mm -hmm. the, um, the decimal feet is read in ArcGIS and it just goes there and doesn't have to scale. It understands it rather than the architectural feet. It just like wasn't understanding. So that's why we had to do the scaling. So it sounds like it was a uh, more of the, about the process rather than the, than the data necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just figuring out that process. Yeah. And and that's what I think you see a lot of times as people are kind of figuring this out and and, and don't expect perfect. Right? Like I always say, don't let perfect get in the way of better. You're making progress. All right, we got close. Now we can see floor plans. Now if we can get it more accurate, and you know, CAD I always say is 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 spatial, but GIS starts adds that geographic component to it. And then you mentioned, you know, getting the survey data. And if we can start aligning it to that accurate survey, now you've, you know, you've improved the pro, you know, improved it further than, than the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited with each iteration. We're finding more and more that we can just make and know that this is accurate and what we share, like, we just know that it's right. So. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't see any more questions that popped up. Um, if, if you've got some, throw it in here real quick. Um, but Deborah, again, I appreciate you you joining. Um, everyone, there's our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, as um, questions, Deborah uh, is more than happy to answer those. I'm sure. Um, you know, I can I can reach out to kind of talk about you know your strategy or where to get going on some of these two. Um, but Deborah, I appreciate you joining. I appreciate everybody joining, taking some time out of your day, you know, post Halloween candy, <laughs> you know, sugar rushes, uh, hopefully that's worn off, but, uh, thank you everyone for taking time. And we're going to be doing another one of these, um, every month. Uh, so join us again for the next one. The next one I think we've got lined up is talking about Texas 811 or, or using 811 to prevent 911. And it's about utility damage prevention. So, uh, the question about utilities is, is pretty apropos. Um, and then stay tuned. We might be having a GIS day webinar series uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm trying to line up uh, several of those to the last, you know, over the course of a day or two. Um, but I appreciate everyone joining. Have a great day and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Deborah. Thank